In this video, I'm going to talk about some techniques for dealing with challenging cameras and visual effects shots. Somebody recently asked me what was the most difficult camera to animate to in any of the shots I've worked on, and the answer is this one. This camera is challenging for a couple of reasons. One is because of the action that needs to take place in the shot. So this is the middle of a fight that's happening between these two characters. You can see the way that the momentum of the camera is taking us from right to left all the way through. So we start off with a fight that's already begun. You can see uh, this character is pushing this other one to the ground through here. So I'm hooking up with a shot where this action is being led into. And then at the end I have to hook up to uh, another motion where this character has fallen to the ground and then gets back up. The movement right to left of the camera that I was mentioning before is suggesting that this fight needs to keep moving. And there aren't any places where the momentum stops long enough that I can have any of these characters stop their left to right momentum for very long. So now that sort of thing isn't usually all that difficult with uh, the fight choreography between two characters like this. But the reason that it's tricky here, and I've added in these markers to show what's going on with this camera. It's tricky because of a couple of key moments here where the camera dips down really low. And one of them, it's, one of them is here at the beginning, like this. You can see there's this arc downward, and then we quickly come up, like this. And then there's an even bigger one that happens here, where this marker you can see starts at the bottom, and goes all the way to the top of the frame, and now we're looking at the ground plane that takes up half of the frame through here and then it resolves back upward again. There's a bit of a stall here. And then again, we've got this quick movement right to left. So a little backstory on this live action background play. Typically what happens in something like this is there's gonna be some pre that's done so that on set when the camera operator is shooting something, they have something to react to, there's a plan. For whatever reason with this background plate there was no plan at all um, they knew that they needed some chaotic fight going on in the backgrounds and what they thought was going to happen was they would drive this truck slowly along this meadow they'd have these trees to create some parallax in the foreground and then the characters would be far in the background um, doing their action and it wouldn't really matter so much what's happening with the camera it's not going to affect it too much but we found with the length of the lens on this camera the characters had to be close in otherwise if we push them back at all it looked like they were way far in the background and there wasn't anything all that dynamic about what was happening and the speed at which the camera was moving left to right meant that if they were very far back the camera would overtake them and they would get lost in the frame Let's show this again with just the markers and the background plate removed. So you can see there are three events that happen in the motion of this camera. There's this first one that happens here where there's an acceleration and a tilt down. And then we tilt back up and then slow down. And then there's another pan over, tilt down. And then we kind of go back a little bit the other direction. And then we start panning over again, and then another acceleration that happens here, and a tilt up, and then a slow pan over. So I should point out, those markers that I put in the camera, I end up using that sort of thing all the time, just to kind of simplify what I'm seeing visually. Right now there's a lot of chaotic stuff going on in the background plate, so I've just tracked those markers along the... Uh, some key points on trees or other things that I'm seeing in the foreground that are very clear. Uh, and then when I remove the plate, it's just easier to see stuff. I end up using that kind of thing all the time. And sometimes what I'll use is in the background when I first uh, get a layout camera and I've got a background plate there that has some kind of complex move to it, something where the camera's orbiting around or it's got a lot of motion like this It's with a handheld camera, I'll put a big cube or a sphere that kind of represents the size and scale and position that my character is going to be in, I'll just put it in there and just start with that so I can see how the character's moving around. Am I looking too high or too low? <clears throat> and it gives me a place to start from so um, I can easily see what I have to deal with. So the most important thing I need to do here, which is typically the case, is give a sense that the action of the characters is leading the motion of the camera. So I want, with a handheld camera like this, I need it to feel like there's a camera operator there and he's trying to keep up with the action of what's happening so that there's some rationale to these, to these motions. But because they're so extreme, like this acceleration here, 
Uh, I know I need something to draw the camera operator's eye over that direction. The problem with this is that because I need to keep the action moving and I've got these accelerations that happen and I've got these moments where the camera tilts down in this really dramatic way, this is suggesting that a character's fallen to the ground, right? There has to be some reason for the camera operator to look down there. So I have to make the character fall down, but I can't have them fall all the way down so that they wouldn't be able to continue moving to screen left throughout the shot. So any way I have them go down to the ground, it has to be some way of keeping the energy moving in the direction I need them to go. So what I decided to do here was in this throw that happens where this character is throwing the other one to the ground, I'm going to turn that into a roll. So I have him roll over his shoulder here and I have this negative space here. Right now he's covered up by these trees as this roll is happening. But then as this negative space opens up, I let his legs enter into that space to give something visually interesting uh, to happen here so that it doesn't feel like we're looking at nothing. If I had him just rolling on the ground down here and now we've got this open space and we've got this guy blocked over here and now we've got a we've got a big portion of this plate where we're not looking at anything so i have this bounce happen and then have his leg get kicked up like this and then have it come down again and then the other thing this roll with the legs splayed out like this is allowing me to do is when i get to here now with the legs sticking out i can lead the camera's action even more this way so when that acceleration happens I can say that oh well it's the camera operator trying to keep up with these limbs that are splayed out from the center of the gravity of the body so now I have some rationale for leading the camera over this way and then because I need to keep the action going right to left I'm going to have this guy right himself very quickly so he does this roll and he does this the idea is that he does this kind of athletic movement where he's gets back on his feet from that roll so I keep that momentum going if I had him just roll and then smash to the ground now what happens is the camera keeps going and tilting up but he's left down here in this space which is going to be a real problem for me so the other thing that I've done here then is have him go from rolling into standing and then have him stand up even higher here so again we're not looking at these characters down here low in the frame and then all this empty space here i need something to look at so uh, i have them both stand up higher through here mostly this guy but this other guy's approaching um, and i'm also splaying out this arm from here to here so this has there's some visual interest here that's filling up the frame and also suggesting that we need to keep the camera moving this way so now i had another moment a really tricky one that i have to deal with it's the hardest one in this shot and it's to create some rationale for the camera to dip down like this in this crazy way where we're looking at a tree and this meadow in the foreground and almost nothing up here and so what I decided to do was to have some moment where this guy gets hurt badly. So I have earlier on in the shot, this sword come out. I think I actually had to do this because it connects, um, it has to hook up later in the scene where uh, in the next shot we see the sword is already out. So I knew that I had to do that at some point. So I have it happen in the beginning of the shot. We kind of lose it in this, in this motion, but at least I'm introducing it here and I tried to do it in a dramatic enough way that we're seeing it in here where all this other stuff is being blocked. So hopefully our eye is drawn enough over to there. So then we get to here and we have this negative space, this open space here. I'm introducing this sword up here and I'm doing it by we have this moment where things slow down here and so I know this is a place where I can let the eye rest on something so I get the sword past this tree and then I'm gonna hold it in space here for a few frames so that it becomes less blurry so you can see there's all this stuff that's blurred but I've got this sword and I keep it in this same place relative to this tree as long as I possibly can so we have some visual reference there and something to hang our eye on and then I do the anticipation for this stab that happens here and so the purpose of this stab is to injure this guy so it's, it's to help with this moment where the camera tilts up here because we're pushing up with this driving up this way that gives some rationale for the camera operator to look up and then because he's been injured by that stab now he's dropping down to a knee but I don't have him drop all the way down I can't have him fall all the way down so at least here we're looking at something and I'm also following through with 
that moment of this hand coming out I can drop it down as well uh, as he comes down so now I've got something to look at at least I've got him he's landed on this knee you can see there's an a, a effect element here where um, there's some dust that gets kicked up and then this arm comes down so at least there's something here in the frame to look at and there's some rationale for looking down then the camera operator looks back and now because I've got this character hanging back here there's also a reason to be looking back. We want to see what happens next. So I have this sword come down into this negative space and pull through this way. And now there's a reason to look back and say like, hey, wait a minute, what's going to happen with that sword next? And then I get this anticipation here where this comes up and I'm going to use this elbow to strike him here. And that movement upward where I'm pressing through with the body and creating this line of action and this strike that knocks him upward that's again leading the camera in this tilt up that happens here and then he's gonna turn I have to have again some reason to accelerate here so we slow down here in this moment and then I'm gonna hook underneath his arm over here with this guy and I'm gonna have him do this throw now I have the this throw is actually unnecessarily or unnaturally fast rather um, but I'm already behind the camera it's accelerated now this way and the throw hasn't happened yet and then I have to catch up with this character by throwing him really quickly so I do this unnaturally fast throw like he's built up a lot of energy in this anticipation uh, this character who's throwing him and then I accelerate that throw and there's enough of just visual chaos here with this tree that it because the character's falling through the background behind all this parallax in the front it's enough just to have that shape coming through there to resolve into the next shot so we feel the momentum of that character coming down and we have something to hook up with um, but because this is because i've been able to lead the camera enough and consistently through the course of the shot this moment where the camera operator gets away from us doesn't feel so offensive it feels like the camera operator is kind of get got into a rhythm where it's like oh they keep moving from left to right and they're moving faster and they're accelerating and he keeps throwing him and he keeps rolling and so then it makes some rational sense where the camera operator would anticipate this moment and try to catch it and frame it better and it isn't just now I'm behind with my animation which would be a real problem typically Okay, so there's a lot of chaotic stuff going on in this shot. And like I mentioned before, I like to simplify things as much as I possibly can. So putting those markers in and finding a way to look at exactly what I'm seeing with that camera motion was really critical here. And then the other thing is just remembering that whatever I do, it has to feel like the action is leading the camera. Uh, so that created a lot of puzzles here that I had to solve. Uh, but part of the fun of doing animation is solving those puzzles and looking back at this shot and seeing that I did it successfully enough that it feels like there was some rationale to why the camera was moving that way is really satisfying and probably nobody in the audience noticed that this wasn't the plan all along. That's my shot breakdown. Thanks for watching.